Hi and welcome to a, another photo train tutorial uh, with Les Arnott and we're going to be doing quite a lot with this file that we're actually going to use uh, we're going to be working in Photoshop we're going to learn how to make a selection um, by a focus area we're going to do lots of things along that way. Let's just, just open the image first that we're going to use. And I have actually put this on the website for you to download. So in the magazine you will see the link for that to download the, the file. So I'm just going to open the file. And there's the file of the barn owl. So I just double click to open that. First thing I usually do in Photoshop straight away when I open an image is to go to the toolbar on the left hand side and to double click the hand tool and that just makes my image in eye size to work to it makes it fit the screen so it's just a quick way of doing that and also what I do is I go to the layers palette and my layers palette is over here and I click there and I can see my background layer there so I right click with the mouse and I'll duplicate the layer and what that does is I've now got the the layer beneath that protected as such we're not going to be working on that layer so if I ever want to revert back to that it's still there I can get back to it also working on this layer we're going to start now making the selection of the actual owl itself so what we want to do is we're going to extract this owl and the stump away from the rest of the image and there's lots of ways of doing that um, you know we we can use selection tools and all that type of thing but it really depends on the type of image and what you want to do first of all when you go to make a selection of something is to look at the subject and say okay what what do I think would be the best now on this image if we look at the owl it's very sharp focus it's all in focus and we've got a very soft background now using the method that we're going to use that will make things a lot easier to actually get the selection so the whole tutorial really to start with is about using that method so it's when you've got similar type pictures obviously you can practice using this image but when you've got images of your own and you've got that nice soft background and your main subject that you want to subtract is sharply in focus this is the way to go about it so first of all on the menu we click the word select and you'll see down there focus area so that's what we're actually going to use and when we click on that a dialog box opens and you'll see this little light down here working away and what that's doing it's looking at the image and it's looking for the focused areas and it's showing me now that it's made a selection and we can change the actual preview the way we actually look at the picture by using this top box so let's look at this box first of all if we click there at the moment we've got marching ants so you can see we've got marching ants going around down the picture there there's overlay which gives me that view there is on black which is quite nice for this one actually we've got on white black on white and that can be useful sometimes because it's showing me some areas that haven't been selected. There's a little area around there and an area around here that uh, haven't been selected that we need to include on that. And you can change between layers. So you, you haven't the view, sorry, you haven't got to be working on the one view. At any time you can change the view of the subject, and that can be handy. So I think first of all, we're going to go with on black okay and that will allow me to see a few things on there that I need to alter so we'll use this method first of all okay now obviously we've got most of the image selected it's, it's done a really good job of looking at the, the parts that are in focus 
and I'm not too concerned about the bird itself apart from around its foot. So the first thing I'm going to do is to zoom into this area so we can have a closer look and we can see we've got a zoom tool actually on this focus area dialog box. And I'm just going to click to get into this area so we can see it a bit closer. You can see the rest of it's looking very, very nice. There's not uh, much to do on there whatsoever. But I want to remove these two areas. Now, what we have got on the left hand side, you've got the hand tool basically, which will allow you to, to move that up and down. Now, I never use that, and I'll show you why in a moment. If we've got another tool selected, this is to add to the selection, the plus and the little minus there is to subtract from the selection, which is the one we want to do. We want to subtract these green areas. But if I did want to move around, I says I don't use the hand tool. If I hold down the space bar with any tool in Photoshop, that will change to the hand tool. So while I've got the space bar down, I can drag my image around and, and look at other areas. And that's really useful. And I say that works with all tools within Photoshop. If you want to move around your subject while you're working, hold down the space bar, and when you let go of the space bar, it will go back to the tool that you was working with. Now, where people tend to go wrong with this is we've got a green area there, and they tend to try and paint on that area. Now, if it's all the same colour, basically, which that is, sometimes one click is a better option. You can resize the size of the brush and you'll see this on the options bar up on this area. You can drag and change the size of the brush. Or there's the other method of using the keyboard and, and that is a good one to learn because it just saves you from moving backwards and forwards doing that. And if you look at your keyboard, next to your enter key you've got the curly brackets or the square brackets. And the one on the right, if you press that, will make it larger. And the one on the left will make the brush smaller. So it's a nice way to work. Now as long as I'm enclosing that green area, I'm not, I'm not too worried about the size on this. So I'm just going to click once. And I'm going to see what that does. You have to wait a bit because the processor takes time. So it depends on the speed of your computer, how fast that happens. And you see straight away, perfect. Now, if I'd have brushed that area, it may be that I've actually caused problems. You know, so if you've got the same colour, one click usually works better. Always try that option first. So now I'll go to this area, and I'll click once. And I'll wait, and there we go. It's done the business. Okay, so now I'm going to make the brush smaller. So I'm going to use my curly bracket on the left to get the brush nice and small. And click on this piece of green down there. One click, and you can see again it's gone. And there's a little bit there, I'll just click on that, and that's gone. Okay, now there's a couple of little areas around here that so I've got the minus still on. I'm just going to go over that, see what happens. There we go, I'll get rid of that there, and a little bit there. So basically, you can add and subtract to what you've got on there. A little bit there I'll get rid of. There we go. And a little bit here. There you go. I'm fairly happy with that. There's a little bit missing there. So I'll click on the plus. And I'm just going to drag and draw that area. And the one click as well. So I tried, but try the click first of all, it says, as it, after it's painted. There we go. So, you see this just added those little areas there. And I'm happy with that. That's it's not too bad. There's a little bit of green down here that I'd like to get rid of. And I'm going to try this. I'm not sure whether it will work, but we'll try that area. I'll just click once. Yeah, that's not too bad. And I'll just get rid of this. A little bit down there. That's good enough for me, that's fine. Okay, and I'm just going to look over the rest of the image. So I hold down the space bar, and I can then drag over the image. 
and I can see there's a piece missing here. So I need to click on the plus and I need to click in that area. Just a little bit there. And that's added that. And now there was also around the eye section, there's a little bit on the bottom of the face there. So I'll just click on that. Actually, no, it's black. So. Okay, so the area that I'm looking at, I can't actually see. I've seen an area around the face somewhere. So to make sure I can see it, I'm going to change the view. I'm going to change it to marching ants. And now I can see that area, can you see? So changing the view really helps. So I'm going to drag over that area there. And that's gone. And everything else is looking neat. Just a tiny bit there that I'd like to add. So that's great. A tiny bit there. And that's looking really good now. So just a little bit on the wood there. We'll get that in. Okay, so remember use the plus and the minus to, to get that perfect selection by doing that. And it really is a good tool, it, you know. And it also learns, uh, and what I mean by that, if you've used the minus and you're not getting exactly what you want, you can add it back with a plus and then move it again with the minus. And all the time the program is saying, okay, that didn't work before, I'll try and make that a better selection this time. And you'll find that the tool learns as you go along. So don't be scared of trying something more than once. Okay, now we have got some tiny little pieces. I'm just wondering whether we can get these. I'm going to zoom in, so I'm going to hold down the mouse with the zoom tool and drag into this area here and just see if I can add these little bits while we're here. So I'm just going to click on the plus and I'm going to make the brush very small. And I'm just going to click on that area. It's got a little bit back, a little bit there. I'm going into the green there, but I'm not too worried yet. I'm going to go on the minus. And making a good selection takes time. You do have to play a little bit. We're not too worried about getting it completely perfect. That's not too bad, actually. We'll just get rid of that bit there. It's okay. And a little bit there. I'll just get some of that back, so we'll go to the plus and we'll say, well, I want that area. Can you see how it's learnt? A little bit there. So all the time it actually learns, it's saying, okay, you... it's not going into that green, it's just going to that area. So we'll try the minus on this little bit. We haven't got to go over the top. It, it, this is going to be a good enough selection, really. So we'll try and bring some of that back. We'll go back to the plus and we'll just drag on this area. And again, you can see the brush is learning. It's saying, OK, you tried that before. You wanted some of that and now we brought it back, but we haven't selected the green. And there we go. A little bit down there. So I want to make sure I'm on the plus, which I am. And I'll just click there. Okay, so making a selection is taking your time and doing these things. Uh, a little bit there, but I'm going to try and add this. So I want that. And this area. And that's looking really good now. The other bits, I'm not too worried about those. That is really a good selection. Okay, so at that stage, I'm going to click on the magnifying glass and I'm just going to show you now if we click on the, the minus on the top we can click and zoom back out. There is another way using the keyboard but that's fine. I think when we're learning it's best to not to do too many keyboard shortcuts because they're so hard to remember so I'll try to try to get around that by using the menu to start with and bring those in gradually. 
Okay, so we're looking good now. Now, this is the important part now because what we want to do is to get our selection on a new layer with a layer mask. And if we look at the output, it actually says that. So it will create a new layer, and on that layer will be this mask that's masking out the background. But that means it's still actually there, and we could get it back if we need it by using paintbrushes and whatever. So basically, we're making sure that we've got all the options there. If we have missed a bit, if we've got the, the layer with a mask, using the mask, we can get bits back. So these are the other selections. So if you just selected new layer, it would actually extract the bird, but you would be stuck at that. You wouldn't be able to get back any bits or whatever if you hadn't, uh, if you'd missed any any areas. It would take away the opportunity to do that. So new layer with mask, and we click on OK. And then when we look at our layers, we now have the selection, and you'll see that the background layer there if we just click the eye to the left of that and hide that layer there is the selection of the owl which i think is pretty neat it's uh, it's really worked well so the next stage i'm going to make sure i'm on the top layer i'm just going to use the zoom tool and zoom into this area now this really is not going to matter, but can you see we've got a little bit of a black hard line there? And there are different ways of getting rid of that. But I'm just going to show you this method. Now, what you've got to remember is we have got a mask. So basically, if we work on the actual image, anything we do outside of the area that's already selected, it's not going to it's not going to do anything as such because it will be hidden behind this mask. So the white area of the mask is the part that's shown. The black area isn't shown. So if I was to get a paintbrush on this and paint in this area and I'm working on the actual image, not the mask, it's not going to, it's not going to show anything because it's simply not there. It's not being shown. It's being hidden. If you're working on the mask and you paint, if you paint with white, so I'll just get a white brush and show you this. And I'm just going to click once there. And it's bought part of the background back. That's part of the background of the image. So it's, okay, I'll undo that. So Control Z on the keyboard will undo. Or you can go to Edit Undo. Now the opposite, if I use a black brush, it takes out and makes that transparent. And we can see underneath it. So black makes things transparent, it adds to the mask that hides things, well, sorry, shows the layers underneath, and white is opaque, so it shows the full density of the actual layer. So I'll just undo that again, Control Z, just to show you that technique. So the edge of this colour, and this is a new technique I taught myself really it's there's other ways of doing this but I actually quite like this what I'm going to do with this is to make sure I'm on the the layer with the picture on so I'm going to click on the picture there not on the mask on the actual picture that's important what I'm going to do is to use the clone tool now the clone tool is located on the toolbar and if you hold your mouse down over those you will see We've got the clone stamp tool. If I hold down the mouse, you'll see clone stamp tool and pattern stamp tool. Make sure you've got the clone stamp tool selected, which is already there in my case. And what this does is it selects part of an image, or you select part of an image, and it clones it to another area. So what I'm actually going to do to get rid of this dark edge is to get the mouse. I'm going to make a small brush using the keyboard like I've already explained. I'm going to say, right, in that area there, that's the colour that that line should be. And I want to go over that line, so I'm going to hold down the Alt key, and you'll see the mouse change. So that shows me that that's the area that's going to be sampled, and I click once, 
and then when I move the mouse over this line so I'll just go back again I'm going to select that area we go over to the line and I'm not going anywhere I'm going close to the selection that I selected and when I hold down the mouse button you can see can you see the plus coming and I'm just going to go over that line and what that's actually doing is cloning that dark area with where that cross is now the beauty of doing this is it's not going outside of the line of the mask so I can be if I'm, as long as I'm careful and I go along there and I'm sampling the right area of colour that's a good way be careful keep on the edge though you know and that's a lovely way to actually to get rid of Of any nasty lines that you've got on the edge it takes a while but I think it's a good method there are other methods like I say but I find this one a, a really good one but you must make sure you're close to the edge so you get more or less the same color so we're close to the edge there into the area that we want to the color that we actually want to get hold down the alt key just go to the line I just very carefully just go over that line now I'm not going to be too particular on this I'm just showing you the method because actually the background is going to be very dark so we wouldn't actually see that line in this case but if you was on a light background of course you would so it's a nice trick to, to learn Okay, so that's how to get rid of the line. Actually, we've got a little bit more down there, but like I say, I'm not too particular about that as long as you've learned the method. So that's one thing to show you. Another thing is, I can't actually see anything around there, but if we've got a soft area anywhere, we could get rid of that, and I think I'll have to show you that in another video, because the selection is so good, it's come out that well. Uh, but let's say we wanted to sharpen a line up. Let's say I wanted to sharpen the edge on this. Working on the mask, so we're working on the image at the moment. If I click on the mask, so on that black and white box there, and I use another tool, which is called the burn tool, and the burn tool is located here. And if I hold down the mouse, we can see a menu of the dodge tool, the burn tool, and the sponge tool. And the burn tool, I'm going to click on that. Now I'm going to explain what the burn tool does first of all. And I'm wrong. I want the dodge, sorry, not the burn tool. I want the dodge tool. What the dodge tool does is it brightens areas. It makes them lighter. Now we're only working with black and white. So therefore, where we've got that soft edge, if I'm working with the dodge tool, it's not going to affect any of the picture really, it's just going to sharpen the, those edges because it's going to make it lighter on the edge. So it's where it's diffused and you're going into black and white. If we just drag and click, I'll make the brush much smaller actually, and just go along the edge there, it will sharpen that up. And if you've got an area I might just let me just say I'm gonna hold down the space bar and then this. You may see a little dark area there, and that's because I've gone over the background with that too much. Now if we use the burn tool, that makes things darker. So if there's areas showing that aren't solid, going over it, you can see now if I go over with the burn tool, this also works on the background area, any soft areas. And takes them away so that's another way of sharpening up the edge so if you're working from the inside you use the dodge if you're working from the outside we can sharpen the edges up if we need to because sometimes a little bit of a soft edge helps on some things but you can see i'm sharpening that up so i'm using the burn tool this time and just sharpening up those edges 
not that they need doing really, but I'm just showing you the technique. I'm just going over the edge here. Okay, that's okay. Now I've also noticed while we're here, we have lost a bit of the foot, and this is why I kept that mask. So if we go back to the mask, we lost a little bit of the talon there, the, the foot coming across there. So I'm going back to the mask, and I'm going to use a white brush. So I'll get my brush, I'll make sure that white is the foreground colour. And we switch between black and white by using this little boomerang there. If we're on the mask, we're only going to be working in black and white. And I'm going to make the brush smaller, and I'm just going to paint that area in. So I'm just going to get the brush, and you can see that, and paint that back in. And also I'm going to smooth and narrow up, so I'm actually going to use a black brush, swap it to black, and I'm just going to paint out this little area. Make short strokes so that people say, I haven't got a steady hand. You haven't got to have a steady hand. Just take your time and just one click at a time will get exactly what you want. Just very short strokes. Okay, now we're looking perfect. I'm going to double click the hand tool. And there we are. And I can now apply that mask. I'm happy with it. So I'm going to right click and apply the layer mask. And what that means is now I've got rid of the mask, it's gone completely, and all I'm left with is the area that was selected. So we've extracted that now, and whatever we put behind that L, it will be behind the L. You know, in other words, it will the, the parts on the, the, the stump down here that have got parts showing through, and, and the bit between the foot will actually be uh, displayed with, with the object if we put an object behind it. So I'm going to click below that layer. Make a new um, layer. So click new layer. You can see it at the bottom there. So when you click on that, just click there, and we get the new layer appear below the previous layer. Yeah. Okay. And what we're going to do with this is I'm going to click on the foreground and background colours here and I want a very dark blue so on the blues there I'm going to slide that down to the blues and I want it very dark almost black not quite black so I'm going to click about about there click on OK and then my background colour I want black well it's black already but if it was well, it's not quite okay so my background colour if you want black without you can type in numbers and whatever to get black. But if you just hold down the mouse anywhere on, on this area and just drag it down to the corner and off the screen and let go, that's going to put it right in the corner and give you a pure black. You can see that all the numbers there are on zero, which is showing I've got black selected. I'll click on OK. So we've got a very, very dark blue and black. And I'm going to click on the gradient tool this time. Now, maybe that you've got the paint bucket tool displayed. You hold down the mouse to get the gradient tool. We click on that. On the options bar, we need to make sure that we select a linear gradient. There's all different gradients going along this toolbar there. And it's the first one there, linear gradient. So we click on that. And then to the left, where we've got our color picker, you can see we can get all these different effects. We actually want the first box foreground to background colour so we make sure we click on that and if ever you've got a box here you just want it to go away just click on the title bar at the top of the screen he says and it's not going up click there sorry not on the title bar on the grey area there and it's disappeared and then remember this goes foreground to background I want the blue to be at the top so I'm going to hold down the mouse at the top of the screen and drag down. Now I want a, a straight line. If I hold the shift key down, you can see I'll put the mouse over here and hold down the shift key on the keyboard. Can you see it moves? And keeping that down, it will keep it at an angle. So I want it to go straight down. So I'll put the mouse down like that. You can see if I veer off slightly while I've got that down, 
it's just going to go straight down to the bottom and I'll let go and I've got this dark background that's almost black but slightly paler blue at the top so it goes from blue to black okay next effect we're on that layer now layer one we'll create another mask and what we're going to do with this is first of all we want white so on the foreground colors we can click there we can do it this way just drag into the top left corner click on OK and I click on my brush and basically I want a very soft brush so we've got these brushes here doesn't matter really which one you click on but the soft brushes not the hard brushes so a soft circular shape I'm going to put a, a white area up here quite large so I'm going to resize the brush I'm going to make sure the opacity of the brush is at 100% I'm going to get to about that area and I'm going to click once one click and you can see how it softens out in that area there now what I'm actually going to do on that is I'm going to make the, the brush smaller and I'm going to come to around this area and I'm going to click a couple of times so one two so it's just brighter in this area. I'll do a couple more actually. There we go. One, two, one, two, three. So it's giving like that light effect there. Okay. So we're starting to get there now. The next stage is I want to bring out the detail in the owl. And what I'm actually going to do at this stage is we're going to flatten the layer because quite often when you're working with an image and we use what, what I'm going to use next is a filter when we use a filter it applies it to the whole image now it may be sometimes that you only want to apply effect to a certain part of the image and this is what we're going to learn so I'm going to flatten the layer first of all flatten the image just click OK on this and what we're actually going to do here is we're going to use the filters that we've showed you in the photo train magazine that you can download for free which is the Nick filters so if I click on there and we go to Nick collection and we want color effects pro 4 now if you haven't got this on your machine look on the magazine or look on the website and look at the videos and we have got the link on there to get the program and a video on how to use the actual program so we click on that and we wait for it to load so it takes a little while there we go and it could come up with any effect when you first put it on there for the first time it usually goes to the black and white conversion and I say in the video that I've done it, it does actually tell you uh, actually I'm just looking at that it looks nice in black and white doesn't it <laughs> we're not going to do it in black and white but I'm just looking at that it looks very really nice so there you go you can use it and get your black and white images but what we are going to do is just to summarize what I, what I showed you in the other video about installing it and how to use the software very quickly the left hand side has got a big list down there of different effects and we're looking for detail extractor I'm going to click on that I want to get some detail into this hour now the trouble is with this is where you've got blue skies and things like that or plain backgrounds green and blues especially it will add noise to the actual image but where you've got birds and stumps and tree stumps and things like that it actually looks quite good so there are ways of actually applying uh, in color effects plow certain areas and I'll just show you that if, if I click on the plus and I'll just click in this area you can see that I can drag up this slider and it's only affecting the area within that circle yeah okay now I'm going to delete that I'm going to press the backspace and delete that because there is actually a better way if you're only using the one filter you're not combining filters 
and that is just to concentrate on the bird and get what you want. So I'm going to take this up, I'm going to add some contrast to this because I want it to be a little bit dark. And I'm going to, that looks great. So I've got the contrast on of 55% or thereabouts. I'm going to be exact. The detail extractor is at about 35 and I'm going to click on OK. And we wait. So saving the image. And there we go. Okay, so that looks great. The only trouble is is I'm not happy with the, what it's done to the to the background. I want it to be much much softer effect in the background. So what we actually do with this is on this layer, the top layer, which is where we've got the detail extractor applied to, we go down to the masks at the, the bottom of the, the palette there. I'll just drag this up actually so you can see it a little bit better. This is to apply a mask. So it looks like a, a white square with a little circle in it. And if I click that, we'll put a mask on. And you see the mask is white. So white means that that mask is opaque. It's showing everything that's on the layer. If we were to paint in black, we would see what's beneath the layer, which is the layer without the effect on. Okay, so if you do that, what we want to actually do is we want the reverse. We want to be able to see straight through it without any effect on whatsoever. And there are different ways of doing that. Now, if you've just clicked that and you've got the white there, fine. You can just go to Image, Adjustments, and Invert. And that will make it black. There's also a keyboard shortcut for that, but I'm not going to confuse people. So that's the first method. Okay, I'm just going to remove this mask now. You wouldn't do this, but I'm just going to remove the mask because I'm going to show you a, a different way. I need to get over the mask there. Right click on the mask and delete the layer mask. Okay, so we're back to where we was. Now if I go back now to, to that button, before I click, if I hold down the Alt key and click, can you see now we've got black? So that's a nice fast way. You can use the other method, but if you remember that, roll down the, the Alt key and then click on the mask, it, straight away it will be black. Now to get the effect on just the bird, which is what we want, and the stump, we use a white brush. So I'll select a white brush, we're working on the mask, and what we do is we paint this area back in. So we've got a soft brush. I'm just going to paint, make sure it's set to 100% and I'm just going to paint where I want that effect to come in. I'll use a smaller brush just to get this little area here. Now painting on the background. I'm going to be really fancy. So we're going to get right to the edge and there we go and that's how we apply a filter just to a, a part of the image where we actually want to so now we complete i can flatten the layers and i think we've learned quite a lot there in that one lesson now it's time to use have a go you can download the bird from the from the actual website you'll see the link in the magazine or on the video on the website to actually get that picture and it's mine so please don't use it for competitions or, or whatever especially if you put it in the photo train one we'll know straight away that's my picture okay but it's great to practice on all the best i hope you enjoyed it